Good morning, guys and girls and non-binary. No, not David. Boil. Oh man, these things are so hard to trade. Snap gas thing is. Impossible. Oh, that's why Lucid is having a pop in pre market. That's nice. I on Q, um, yeah, maybe in a few days. Yeah, that AFRM does not want to dip. <laughs> I've been waiting for a dip since 120s or, or sideways consolidation. Oh, man. Lucid, yeah. Yeah, this Lucid Motors has a big, big breakout on the weekly and monthly. This thing looks uh, potentially powerful. And it had an enormous run earlier this year. Thanks, I will enjoy the Celsius. <laughs> oh no, this IINN. Why is it gapping down? I was hoping this thing would hit 20 today. <laughs> All right, good luck everyone.
Lucid, one of your best trades to date. Well, wait until it goes to 50. It's barely even up since uh, two days ago. SPWR looks like all the other solar names. Would I say EMPH has enough volume? Been EP. It traded 400,000 shares the first minute. The average volume is less than 2 million. It traded 25% of its average daily volume in the first minute. I'll leave it at that. MQ trade, yeah, I'll go. I'll go over it later. Remind me later. My entry on DVAC, higher.
And now EMPH has traded the average daily volume. But will it have follow through? That's the question. Just because there's an EP doesn't mean it will have follow through. It's not that easy. Just look at AFRM to know what I mean. So sad IIN and didn't have any follow through. I really wish this thing would gap up to 20. <laughs> oh well. Can't have easy money every day, right? Oh my god, guys. That SHIB breakout? Guys, check out the SHIB breakout. Th does this setup look something like familiar? Look at it now. <laughs> Man, I need to start trading more crypto. How liquid is it? Um, Shib USD. Uh, no. Shib. 
There's too many um, zeros. I, I can't calculate that. Market cap. Volume. Is this correct? It's quite illiquid. It's extremely liquid. Yeah, it is extremely liquid. It trades. Billions. If this was a stock, it would be one of the most uh, liquid stocks. Oh man. That's the problem with trading crypto. You have to get move your money around into these wallets and I, I just want to keep my money in. Like why can't I trade uh, like if you could trade stocks via Coinbase, that would be another thing. Wait, you can only buy 94 million shares at a time on Coinbase Pro. What does that mean? Yeah, but the interactive <laughs> guys, I don't care about stuff like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I can trade them via my regular accounts. It's these uh, arcane uh, cryptos, uh, you know, Solana and SHIB and Doge and all these ones that I want to trade. Weeble. Day trading crypto. Ugh. Who the fuck day trades crypto? Those things make enormous moves. There's one thing you, I mean, <laughs> oh my God. Why would you ever want to day trade crypto? That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They make enormous moves. There's no reason to day trade them. Now imagine buying, imagine being a day trader, buying SHIB here and sell it here. What the fuck is the point? Really? What the fuck is the point? Or you just go to sleep and catch a move like this. The point is the 100x leverage. Well, all these guys blow up. Every single person who uses 100x leverage consistently, they will blow up. It's just a mathematical certainty. Orion, guys, 
all these links, all these weird links, describe what it is. You would know your risk reward is better in day trading than just buying and hoping. Well, actually risk reward in day trading is shitty. It's like the worst. Day trading has the worst shit, uh, <laughs> risk reward. No, short term swing trading, let's say three to five days. But I am not a fan of um, advocating day trading for anyone. I wish I um, never found day trading. It's an epic waste of time. <clears throat> and yes, it's true. I made my most, my first million mostly from day trading. But if I skipped day trading and started swing trading, I would have made like two million by that time. <laughs> Guys, like you have to understand, day trading is so much more difficult. You're always fighting near your entry. It's an illusion. Oh, it, like you, you can control your risk. The thing is, your margins are so thin. You have no margin of error. And just the, a couple of mistakes can wipe out you know, months of profits. In swing trading, it's not the same. So much easier. You can be drunk in swing trade. It's much more forgiving. But it depends on personality. Some people are just wired for day trading. They just want the action. They don't really want to make the money. <clears throat> And also day trading is not scalable. You know, good luck day trading with a hundred million dollar account. You, you, you know, you can't double, triple. I mean, it's so hard to make any meaningful returns. And there's maybe only like five stocks you could trade, you know, <laughs> that are liquid enough. Dun, dun, dun. Man, a lot of these solars are going. <clears throat> I, I'm a little bit sad I got stopped out of this tan entry. I had my tan entry from 89. I'm a little bit sad I got stopped out on it. But it is what it is. Mm. 
you can swing trade small caps as effectively with your method as moves are made over my what the fuck are you talking about dude micro and small caps they're perfect for the <clears throat> way i trade eps and uh like stuff like high tide flags Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> People just making things up on the go. Like small and micro caps, that's where my setups work the best. That's where you get the most explosive moves. Oh yeah, MQ, yeah. So NQ, that's definitely not a traditional setup. I bought it yesterday after I saw Citron tweeting about it. And I also saw some other smart guy tweeting about it like two weeks ago. Um, and, and these things, you know, it's in the right sectors, right? They're in the payments, in the crypto payments. I don't know what they do. Wait, actually I do. They do. And that's why I think it's so interesting with their technology. Uh, and you know, they're, 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 uh, anyways, they have this uh, partnership with Con Coinbase, Fold, I don't know what it is, ShakePay, I don't know what it is, and Backed, Backed is this stock that went crazy this week. And I saw it starting to break out and then Citron tweeted about it and they're super bullish. Not that it matters, they don't really have that good of a track record. But you know, they have all this partnership with all the right names. That's why I got excited about it. And they were about to like, you know, break out of this trend. I thought it was a good risk reward trade. And it actually ended up going at a straight up. But you know, sometimes this is where, you know, experience and intuition plays in, you know, overriding your traditional setup when just, you know, the stars align, you have a hot market and then you get all these, you know, magic words and all these magic partnerships. <laughs> CCJ, it rejected the 10 day. What does that mean? It what? 
Oh, reclaimed. I thought it said rejected. Yeah, yeah. This is sign of strength. This is an extreme sign of strength. They can't keep it keep it down. Also, these uranium ETFs still building higher lows. URNM and URA. I'm I'm really excited. I think next leg higher is gonna be epic on these uranium related names. I really do. I think it's gonna be beautiful. They're acting very, very well. Setting up really nicely. Yeah, ICLN is the same thing as QCLN and TAN, pretty much clean energy ETFs. But the ICLN is the slowest one, so you should never trade this thing. You should either trade QCLN or TAN. Um, it's options hawk. Options hawk. He tweets, uh, you know, he's good with uh, news and stuff like that. Options. KLNE, what's that? Clean energy. Oh my god, this thing doesn't even trade. Oof, this thing is thin. Yeah, I wish it was more liquid. Oh man, it's so illiquid. Hey guys, do you know any good, I know there's like, um, any good alternatives to, like I use Centerpoint with Wedbush clearing and clear streaked clearing. Now Wedbush, the problem with Wedbush is they many times restrict these huge runners, so you can't short them. The problem with Clear Street is they don't restrict, but they have these say, crazy margin requirements. Is there any broker clearing uh, combination that where you get the good borrows? Cobra, Guardian, yeah, those are the ones people usually mention. Cobra or Guardian. What's the difference between Cobra and Guardian? And then there's another one like success trader, which is po uh, like something there are division of regal securities. Cobra also wet bush. Yeah, I don't want wet bush and I don't want clearing. Uh, sorry, clear street.
Guardian Aster. Yeah, Trade Zero is uh, like offshore. Guardian were shady. In what way? Hey, MCO, can you th uh, whisper me? What? How? How were they shady? No, IBKR is shitty for low gates. Cobra. Regal Hilltop. Because the thing is, this clearinghouse uh, restrictions and this margin restrictions and stuff like that, they've cost me a lot of millions over the past three sessions, four sessions. Well, you can trade you can trade USC ETFs if you have a US account. Go with an institutional broker. Uh, like which ones? But I'm not an institution. I'm a I'm an individual. Yeah, so, yeah, but what, which ones are prime brokers? So guys, those of you who actually traded stuff like DVAC, FUN, uh, what's the other one, BACT? The past few days on the short side that use uh, either Guardian or Cobra. Like, are the where the locates available, and did they have you know reasonable margin requirements? Yeah, but Nathan uses uh, Center Point just like me. Miscellaneous, how do you know? Or do you use an ins institutional broker? Cobra, yeah. Yeah, but Goldman, Merrill, are they good? <laughs> Apex clearing? No. I haven't... I haven't heard about them. I'll rate to
Yeah, but the problem is, do these prime brokerages even accept the individuals, no matter account size? I'll have to do some more research. They do? With a large enough account? How big is a large enough? Hey, can I, can I, I, I want the same broker uh, Bill Wang used. No special reason. HX, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I don't really see anything here. Um. DVM. Yeah, a lot of these old gas names are flagging, like Fang, DVM. Yeah, they, they look good. Uh, there's a lot of them. These are just a few. AR. It had a failed breakout a few days ago, but look at where it found support. Still building higher lows. You know, it looks powerful. They really want to go. these things. SM. 
Yeah, SM is the strongest one. Yep, this thing actually held the breakout spot. Yep. RRC. Yeah. If I have any advice on DWCU, I, I have no advice. I, I, I don't really uh, know the specifics of it, of the units and, um, and warrants. I don't. Well, ADR matters because you want to weed out the slower moving names. Like you, generally you never want to be in a stock that has ADR of say 1.5 or 2 or 2.5 if you have a small account. You want to as much as possible be in the stocks with higher ADRs than that. But if you're a position trader, yes, you can, especially if you have a larger account, you know, have, being in a stock that has like 2.5 ADR, it's not an issue. They can still make big moves. If you're willing to wait many months. But for someone who has a tiny account, uh, you know, less than say, or, you know, let's say definitely less than 1 million, 
there's no reason to ever be long a stock that has ADR of less than five. I, I think it's an epic waste of time. There's always gonna, if you can't find anything, well, it probably means the market is shit. Well, no, I mean, I think you should always have a trailing stop on partial to get the home runs. But I think you may want to, um, you know, sell some more aggressively. Lock in some more aggressively. Wow, they're really giving snap away. <laughs> oh man. Guys, did anyone catch this Amba last earning season? Look how perfect it was. Broke this, I don't know, four or five month range in huge volume. It was building higher lows for two, three months th or four months before the earnings. Uh, and at this range breakout uh, on enormous volume. Look at this volume. That was like 10 times the average, 20 times the average, right? Uh, look at this follow through. Oh my God. I, I saw it, but I passed on it. It was just way too thin for me.
I hope EMPH does something similar because it's a similar chart. You have like a five, six, seven month, um, you know, range. You kind of had higher lows and now, okay, the, the volume isn't that crazy yet. Or actually it's only 58 minutes since the open. It's probably gonna end up like a 10 plus million dollar day, uh, volume day, share volume day. Hopefully this thing can do something similar. That would be great. And then we had obviously UPSD. That one I traded perfectly until I over uh, rode my sell rules and sold it here. And it went up another 42%. What a genius. That's what happens when you try to override your um, <laughs> sell rules. What more EPs were there? I know there were at least two, three more. I just don't remember them. Um, yeah, Perry yesterday, yeah. Someone mentioned this Perry in pre-market. I didn't check the numbers, but I guess the numbers were good. And it had big, big volume out of the gate. Again, same thing. Yeah, building higher lows for a long time. Had this range. And it traded... First minute, it traded 70,000 shares, which is like 15% uh, or so of the average daily volume. And the first two minutes, it traded 200,000 shares, which was like 20% of the average daily volume. You know, big, big volume right out of the gate. Doku. Doku, yeah, Doku was a good one too. I s oh no, this was uh, not last earnings season. Did that this was the one before. I saw this one too, but I thought it had too much overhead resistance. It hadn't, it didn't have a clean range, so I passed on it. But yeah, because the opening range highs, that was a tricky one. I I prefer clean ranges. The opening range highs were somewhere here in the mid 200, two hundred two two. I don't know, 212 or 213 or I don't know, something like that. It was below, I, I thought it was gonna get, you know, uh, rejected on all these moving averages, but <laughs> apparently it didn't. Uh, SWBI, I don't remember this one. Uh, yeah, that was two earnings seasons ago, but that was a perfect one too. Look at the volume. Yeah, B E. I I mean it. I know about that. I'm talking about last earnings season. A E H R. Yeah, that was a couple of. Yeah, yep, yep. When they guided had this order, when they received this order, man, what a move! And guys, this is the small account advantage. Look at the moves these micro cap stocks can make. Team. Yeah, team was one too. I look at this clean range. It what happened? Oh, um, team was one too. Broke out the new highs. I've been building higher lows. Had a multi-month, like four or five month consolidation, and you know, big volume day. But the numbers weren't really exciting. But man, and it also had this flag breakout. I was seriously contemplating buying it here, but I didn't. Now it's not the fastest mover, it's kind of low ADR, but for me it's a high priced liquid stock. For me it's perfect. I can do some decent size. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to show you guys, there's so much opportunity and especially if you have a small account and can trade these micro small caps, you have like five, ten times more opportunity than I have. There is no such thing as a small, small account challenge. It doesn't exist. People who sell subscriptions have made the, made it up. And now, now the next uh, three weeks, 
starting this week, there's not there's mostly like uh, boring type of companies and large caps reporting this week, with the exception EMPH today. Uh, but next week and the week after, we we're gonna get more like uh, you know growth stock type of uh, earnings and mid caps and small caps and micro caps. And there's gonna be a bunch of stocks that are gonna double, triple over the next few months after announcing earnings, okay? And you need to be focused, you need to be ready, you need to be prepared. Oppor there will be opportunity almost every day over the, uh, maybe not every day, but there's gonna be at least this, uh, half a dozen five-star opportunities coming over the next couple of weeks. for you guys. And you got to make a decision. Am I going to be ready to profit from these opportunities? Or am I going to have a loser mentality? Where I don't believe you can control risk by holding things overnight. The choice you gotta make. <clears throat> Any tips on... Uh how to enter EPs when there are multiple ones that break out on the one minute opening range highs. Get another screen. Get another monitor. So you can, uh, you know, put, put pull the charts up and also grow one more head and one more hand. You will have no problem entering several. DVAC. Yeah, you need one brain cell per monitor. <laughs> it's true. Yes, you should always uh, use a pre-market scanner to see what's gapping up on volume. There's no need to go through 50 earnings reports. You just need to scan for things that are gapping up on volume. And you don't, you don't need to buy everything on the first one minute 
breakout. You know, you can you can buy stuff on the five minute breakout or a sixty minute breakout as long as it you know hasn't gone up like you know enormous amounts since the first one and five minute breakouts. But you know, most of the time you don't need to be the first one in. Let the stocks prove themselves. Many times it's better to let them prove themselves. Sector strength, uh, I use my eyes mostly to gauge sector strength. When I see a lot of solars breaking out from long bases, I, I use my two brain cells and my eyes to figure out that, oh, the whole sector is strong. Or did you want to? Uh, did, did you want me to share some uh, advanced code you can put into your uh, charting software? Uh, in that case, I don't have any. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, people always want to add things to the trading when they instead they should remove something. Well, I guess this tan is gonna fail again. <clears throat> but EMPH is holding up well. Tan is weak, but the EMPH looks great. Bum.
one thing you struggle with is perfection many times it affects your trading what do you recommend to get being perfect in trading being imperfect what do you recommend to get in being imperfect in trading i don't know what you mean by perfection well you know you should try to take some profits out and go to the store and if they ask you if you were perfect in your trading when making those profits you should try to be perfect if they don't ask any questions it's okay to be imperfect when i bought my yacht no one no one asked me if i was perfect in my trading in my entries exits position sizing and also never asked me if the, no one asked me what kind of setups i made that money from and also never no one asked me what i think about the interest rates and the potential of hyperinflation No, no one asked me what UPST does, no. Breaking up? Yeah, no, Russell, it's, a, it's an enormous lagger. It's a huge piece of shit. It just can't get going. It's building higher lows, but it's just not going higher. <laughs> it's a huge turd. Wait, what's this? A oh. Also, uh, getting back to to your question, like that's the beauty beauty uh, beauty of swing trading and increasing your time frames, increasing the risk reward. You don't have to be perfect. You have higher margin of error than when day trading. You don't have to use as much brain power in swing trading. You just need to f zoom out and focus more on the forest than on the branches on individual trees. And things will become much easier. But what is difficult is focusing on the right stocks. Like I, I feel that's maybe one the, the hardest thing you know, I see it all the time, like people ask about setups, but, th th you know, you, you need to be able to weed out the, you know, random stocks. Just because a stock has a flag or some setup doesn't mean you should trade it. There's just too much randomness. You need to get the randomness out. That's the hardest part, I think. You get the randomness out by uh, studying perfect setups from the past decades. You're still holding back? Why? You bought it at what? 16? Why did you buy it at 16? What's the setup? Yeah, okay, 16, yeah, the flag. Yeah, low 16s, mid 16s. Yeah, okay, that was a good entry. Uh, you held 50% of your position to 54? You mean 34 or 24? Okay. 
I, I guess that's a typo. Uh, you bought more at 37... F what? Are we talking about the same stock? Because it never hit 37.40. Well, actually it hit 37 but never hit 40. Oh, pre market Wait, you bought more at 37 and 40? I'll I'll go check um, the action what you saw in 37.40. So you added more, but you you didn't sell those ads. What? No. Let's see here. Um. Hmm. Oh, Hintra, here it is. Uh, fact. Oh, okay. I see what you see. Uh, 3740. Let's see here. So you bought more at 3740. Uh, I'm not sure the setup. Why didn't you sell? It hit like 57 bucks. Why didn't you sell those ads at least? Dude, you know, th you know, th these types of moves are very rare, especially on big stocks like this. You, you gotta sell it, you know, in these big moves. It went from 40 to 60 or 50, almost 50% 50 in just, you know, an hour. Less uh, in in after hours, you know, you gotta sell those ads into it. Well, let's see what more was there. Uh, can you give recommendation how it's better to sell riding the rockets like backed? Well, you can use like some like a 10, 10 period moving average on the five minute or twenty period moving average or something. You would have gotten stopped out, you know, somewhere in the. 50, 50 area. But I do think, you know, after stock hit 57, I do think it's irresponsible to hold it all the way down to 20. Yeah, you were lucky this time. There is no, no, that's why you need to be awake. When you have stuff, you know, when markets are hot like this, you can't go to sleep. You need to, ch especially if you have positions on. You need to be up to late after hours and be up early pre-market. Yeah, tan. the problem with tan is it's it's too extended. It's you know it's breaking this range, but it's not really not really great. Oh well. Mm-hmm. 
WTRH. Well, you're not crazy to sell some into strength, but you know, these types, they can go to, you know, double, triple. This wasn't even a big move from what, 150 to 25, 50%. It's not even that big of a move for a stock like this. These things can double, triple. But yeah, I mean, if you feel uncomfortable, you can absolutely sell some into strength. The best uh, risk to water trade I ever had? No, probably one to 100, one to 50 on partial size. But one good one recently was uh, DVAC. That was, um, I don't remember the trades on it, but you know, the initial buys or the rebuys where I bought in the low 14s, my risk on those were like, I don't know, buck 50. And I held my last shares to, actually I did sell everything in the high 40s and then I rebought it after hours on the flag after hours. Uh, I don't know, what's the risk reward? 14 to, uh, that was, ah, that, I don't know, what's the math here? I, I don't uh, That was like one to 20 risk reward, I guess. I don't know. That was fairly good. Well, how I could hold because it there was no reason to sell it, just went straight up, and the the rebuys I had in the four, like fifty area or whatever it was on the after hours flag, those I held to, I don't know eighty or something. 
And that's where my imagination ran dry. And then it hit <laughs> almost 180. That's the story of my life. You need those home runs, guys. You need those home runs. That's where, you know, now and then you're gonna catch something that just keeps going and going and going and going and you make more money than you ever thought was possible. Don't limit your potential, guys. Always trail some. The randomly selling into strength is not a good strategy. It's a loser strategy. You can make money off of it, but you're never gonna make spectacular returns. <clears throat> Who's the genius who bought this thing at 2.30? Pun intended. Dun, dun, dun. Do I think it's a good idea to wear white t-shirt and blue jeans? Yes.
Yeah, this Tesla is um, it's an amazing stock. You know, I said it for many years, but it's the best trading stock ever. It really is. When I start going through my scans every couple of minutes, that's a good sign I should uh, go do something else. Let's just keep clip, uh, clicking around. Monday as a barcode. Yeah, it looks like a barcode. It needs to, uh, you know, break out with conviction with high volume. Right now it's, it's building higher lows. It's just too random. I guess earnings are coming up soon. Maybe on earnings. Leo. Uh, yeah, looks a bit stronger than the other mon uh, uranium names.
<clears throat> Any edge in N NMG? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It it looks it looks too random. I, I don't know. I mean, it, the flag itself looks good, but it's always I always dislike the ones that are you know in in a downtrend. It, it had a much better setup. Like, you know, these types of setups are much better when they make a big big move. You know, they double, triple, especially these small micro caps, micro cap ones, and then have a high volume breakout of a flag. You know, this is you know those are the best. Something like this, when you have all these declining moving averages, they, uh, I, I prefer clean ones. It's borderline random. It's borderline random stock. Plug? Yeah. Plug has been fighting here at the 200 day. It hasn't, you know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it has to, yeah. And the 10, uh, 10 period on the monthly. I'll set an alert for it. CPE, yeah, yeah, it, it's a good looking one. I, I think it's, you know, ideal if few more days are sideways, but this thing looks ready. But I, I, again, I understand this is a commodity related stock, oil, gas. The whole sector needs to go. It's just one of many uh, setups in, in the sector. A slab potential oh potential EP it's a, it's a definitely an EP I don't know what the news were but it's already traded like twice the average daily volume oh it, no wait what's the news is it earnings I mean look at this break I broke out of like a nine month base I've been building higher lows into it looks great on the weekly and monthly looks really really good what was the news? Yeah, earnings. Marketsmith has it updated because they're fucking boomers. So I can't see the growth numbers. Low ADR? Yeah, 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 that's true. It's boomer ADR. It's true. Not an ideal one, but. But just to illustrate the concept. So it traded what five, seven, ah, it wasn't, that was a little bit tricky one because, oh no, wait. So it traded 16. I mean, yeah, it, it has, it, it had decent volume. This was a little bit trickier. Technically it was five star. But yeah, a little bit low ADR. 4.5, yeah, yeah, it's a boomer, boomer type of a mover. Yeah, it, it wasn't really a big gap up. I wouldn't have. Yeah, many times the obvious ones are better. This wasn't as obvious, but it can make a big move. I mean, it's already up like 10% from the opening range highs and but if you look at the history of this thing, it, it's not really a great trading stock. You know, it, it's a mean reverting that one. It always mean reverts to a 1020. It's not one, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a random stock. You know, versus something like EMPH, 
if you look at historically the moves it made, you know, this thing has a history of clean moves. I even traded, I remember I traded this EP here. It ended up going up 150% in the next three or four months. I remember I bought this EP here. Five star back in 2019. You know, look at how clean the moves are, you know, big explosive moves. This thing has a history of trading well and then last year made an enormous move. So this is something that, you know, this is a trading stock. Something S-Lab is not a trading stock. It's a uh, mediocre trading, mediocre stock. What market data plans do I use for center point? How the fuck should I know? I don't know. Enough so I can trade the stocks I need to trade. <laughs> I don't fucking know what market data plans. I have no idea. Wrecker? What's Wrecker? It's just a random stock. It's a random stock. It, 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 there's, it's it's a, just a random name. I, I don't think there's anything special. I see what you see, but it's it's just, you know, it's not great. Why do I think so many speakers, traders speak so highly on MarketSmith? I don't know. I think it's a ex extremely mediocre software. I'm always constant trying to, you know, get rid of it, but I just like the way they represent the data here. Like this data box, this is what I really like about them. Like I also use Coifin, but it's more, you know, I just want this kind of data box. That's it's a, that has a lot of value for me. And also this this data box. Everything else is just a waste of time. The charting is horrible. It would be better if they just pack up their offices and go retire. That would be better for everyone, I think. They, they haven't updated this, uh, the platform in the last like 15 years. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people have affiliate programs with their with MarketSmith because, you know, most traders are useless and they, you know, they need to sell services to survive. And they need to have these affiliate programs. That's why I think a lot of traders love MarketSmith. <sighs> Yeah, everyone has the same data. It's how you present it visually. That's important for me. Like Coinfin, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll show you what Coinfin looks like. Uh, like this is for EMPH. Like, uh, what happened here? Wait. Wait, did you? It looks different from. Um, Something is weird. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's kind of confusing. And I want to see the historical, like the last like eight quarters. It's good to see the forward estimates for EPS and revenues. One thing that annoys me with markets me, you can't see the forward estimates for revenues. It's so stupid. Uh, but what I find annoying with Coifin is you can't, I want to see like the past quarters, just visually representing the data. Everyone has the same data. It's how you, rep you know, visually present it. That's important for me. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, wait. Guys, do you have the link? It's true. Someone... I forgot about it. I haven't used it in a while. Guys, the link someone made, the Chrome extension or whatever it was. Do you guys have the link? I Yeah, Husky Trader. Holy shit, I totally forget about it. I totally forgot about it. Where is it? Uh, wait. Don't I have the extension? Wait, I have the extension. Keeper uh, delimit. Okay. Uh, what do I need to do here? Uh, go to file. No. What do I need to do? Uh, oh. Oh, I thought I already had done it. Okay, I'll 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 get I'll get it working. Yeah, that's that was a really good one. I forgot about it. That's the thing. Between earning seasons, you're gonna forget about things. Back is coming back now. Uh, found support in the twenty EMA. Trading views financial panel? No, I haven't tried it. They have a financial pl yeah, there's so many platforms. Can't 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 keep track of them. Yeah, I'll try the trading view financial. Is it good? Are they good at presenting the data? Yeah, trading you. That's the, the yeah. That's really. I'm super impressed by them, man. The way they've improved, and the way the charting works, how smooth it is, man. I, I really, you know, it's, it's the opposite of this boomer thing uh, software like MarketSmith. TC2000 has improved too. It's a you know, they're it's also boomer software, but they have improved a lot over the years but market smith they haven't done anything it's like the keep world keeps revolving and there's there there's you know they're they're not moving at all ff5e yeah i saw it before it has an ep right yeah i get oh man i mean it looks five star But it's a little bit slower of a stock. But it had some decent follow through. But actually, wait, November to January? No, this is actually a shitty move. No, that's not impressive. Yeah, it's it's a slow, um, slow stock. <sighs>
Man, high ADR is so confusing to people. Why is it so confusing? You want to have, you want to keep your portfolio ADR as high as possible. All right, I'm going to cut the stream. Just watching paint dry at this point. Okay, good luck, guys. See you tomorrow.